Hi everybody, did you know that Cubase has a step sequencer that you can use to make dope beats? Well, it does, and today I'm gonna show you how to use it. Let's do it. So a lot of people that use Fruity Loops or something will complain that Cubase doesn't have a step sequencer, but it does. And it may not be as fully featured as Fruity Loops one, but it works just fine if you're trying to step sequence a quick beat. So I'm gonna jump into Cubase and show you uh, how to use their step sequencer. Uh, but before we get into that, I'm gonna say that I don't use the step sequencer all that much because I love Cubase's drum editor. And we can get to the drum editor. This is contact, and uh, if you click into it, it'll load the piano roll. But honestly, for anything, you can get to the drum editor by going MIDI open drum editor, and I should probably assign that to a hotkey, but, uh, but you'll see that you have your options here. And so I like to program drums in the drum editor. Oh, I still have Beat Designer on, huh? And you see when you double click, it'll open the key editor, but if you go to open drum editor, you'll see it. And before you know it, you have a pretty sick beat in the drum editor and Cubase. But a lot of people don't think that way. They think in terms of step sequencing. So uh, what they would have to do is use a MIDI insert like Beat Designer. And you can find that here on your track inspector and you add MIDI inserts, you add and you choose Beat Designer. And then what you get is the official step sequencer of Cubase. So if we did boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, boom. You can uh, use step sequencing, and if you hold and drag the beat up, you can increase velocity, so. And before you know it, you're making beats. You're making dope beats in Cubase using a step sequencer. So I'm gonna take you through everything that's important to know about the step sequencer. Uh, the first thing is that it starts by default at 16th notes and 16 steps total, which gives you one bar. Now, you can also uh, have these sort of scenes stored or banks, sub-banks. I don't know exactly how they use their terminology, but if we wanted to switch this up, boom, and we'd have the snare on the three, boom, bap. Boom, bap, boom, bap, ba boom. And then we can switch back. And so you can store things and then you can use a Beat Designer as a performance tool, you know, if you assign a MIDI track and the input is Beat Designer, you can actually play it on your keyboard. I don't have that assigned yet, but you can do it. You can see how it would function here. Now, it's set to jump after the bar, but if you wanted it to jump now, you just have that clicked. Uh, so that's how you change the jump, uh, whether you want it instantaneous or at the end of a bar. Um, if you want two bars at 16th notes, you'd have to have 32, and then you can double your speed. You can also change it to any increment. The only problem that you run into, uh, the resolution of the beats, is that if you switch it to eighth, all these notes become eighth notes. So you can increase the resolution, um, but you have to realize that everything comes that way. So if you want to add like uh, 16th note fill patterns, you're going to have to uh, work a little bit harder or become a little bit more creative because everything will default to whatever you have the beat resolution set to, unfortunately. Um, 
But as long as we're covering this, you have beat resolution, you have the length. So this would be one bar, and if I was 32, it would be two bars. Um, what else do we need to show you? Oh, here's a good one. This right here is your flam, so we'll add our snare. Well, if you click at the bottom of this, you get the uh, flam, and there's three different types of flam, so I will bump this up. And this will be one dot, this will be the two dot flam, and this will be the three dot flam. And we'll offset them um, just more drastically so you can hear them, and then you'll get the volume of each flam, the level. Interesting, huh? So you get uh, flams within the beat designer, which is nice because flams can add some spice. And then the other thing that adds spice to beats so much is uh, swing. So let's just add some closed hi-hats on 16th notes. This is your swing. But if you notice, there's two settings, so I can adjust the swing to swing two. And you see there's less swing because uh, it's closer to the center. So it's important to understand that you can have two. So if you wanted your hi-hats or your snare to swing a little bit differently than your toms or your ride cymbal, that's definitely possible within Beat Designer. Now, if you want to write this stuff to your uh, into your actual project window, uh, that's where this drop-down menu comes in. So you can insert pattern at cursor, you can insert the whole bank at cursor, or you can insert it at the left locator. So I have my left locator set, let's do that there. And we have the pattern. So I think that we've covered most of the basics except for one thing, and I've saved this for the last, so hopefully you're still watching. What if you want more than eight drums? All right, this is, I think, the worst, the worst part of uh, the plugin. You don't, you'd never know this, and it's not in any of these drop downs. But to add instruments, and I will, uh, let's see here. I'll zoom in real quick. It's right here at this plus. So you can add as many instruments as you want if you wanted a full drum set with a bunch of different articulations. Uh, it's available, but uh, it's difficult to know that the adding instruments is here, and then if you want to take them away, it's the minus above. So that is my pro tip for Beat Designer if you want more than eight sounds out of the box. And this has been a whirlwind tour of the features that are available in Cubase's Beat Designer, their own step sequencer that you can add as a MIDI insert if you're on Cubase Pro. I'm not sure if it's on Cubase Artist and Elements. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have one of those versions and whether or not you can find it there. But that's been all for this week, everyone. I uh, hope you all have enjoyed this tutorial and maybe you've learned something. If you have, feel free to like or subscribe and take care of yourselves, everyone. Peace.